When somebody applies for rigs, the first thing I look for is their voice. You know, their doctor may think it's a great idea, and their parents may think it's a great idea, or their children may think it's a great idea. I want to know that the interest is at least tentatively there in the prospective patient. Because if that's not there, then I haven't got much to work on. I've been doing admissions, sometimes I say to the patients at RIG, since the Cretaceous period. And, and, and my own personal observation is that motivation and time are two very powerful predictors of outcome. And so I look for that motivation in the first place that I can and in and, and trying to find the patient's effort to let us know that they're interested. When we actually are sitting down face to face and talking, you know, there's an aspect of the evaluation that has, to know, that has to do with simply as a clinician getting a good clinical picture of who is this person diagnostically. But the most interesting and challenging part of the uh, assessment in the in initial consultation prior to admission is to find the person, to find the way that their story comes to life in the room, in what's unfolding between us, and hopefully that, that the things that are problems come to life and that we can begin to see whether there's a way to build a working alliance around that. You know, the suicidal patient, for example, who's facing the reality that if they want treatment for that problem, they're going to have to be committed to keeping themselves alive. Uh, we can't treat people who aren't alive, and they've simply got to be able to make that commitment and to own not only the part of themselves that may want to be dead, but also the part of themselves that feels enough hope to try and see if there is a way to make a life worth living.